Okay, so we have a lot of things to look at here. I have arranged my things that I have gathered um, in, in order. I have some natural items here. I have, um, so I walked around the yard and I would suggest you do that too. I picked up these really interesting looking catalpa beans. Um, those would be cool and there are of course many multiples of those. We took down a tree recently so we ha I have this nice axe cut piece of wood that's conveniently flat enough that I could incorporate it into um, any work. I have some um, pomegranates at various stages and some sage. Um, those things are going to decompose but they would decompose slowly and dried things of course would fare better. Um, I have, this is really, really fun and I'm definitely going to use these. I have these um, eggs that my mom found. Uh, I guess they're lizard eggs or something. And I'm going to clean them up and those will be really delicate. Something like that really has a lot of meaning whether, you know, you're referring to uh, alien lizard eggs or um, the life cycle or the newness um, or, you know, decay. You can use those in so many different ways. Um, I have an old dictionary, um, and I'm not suggesting that you destroy books, but if you have some books that are old and yellowed, this would definitely bring a sense of nostalgia to any piece, even if you don't aren't able to read the words, just the, the reference, uh, and the paper's really thin, and so it does really well uh, when you glue it or crumple it or anything like that. You can treat it. Um, I have cards, a deck of cards, um, the Joker, of course, the various face cards could be interesting some beads. I have a pair of gloves. So anything that's going to be gloves, a uh, tiny bow, things like that are going to be, especially this is going to, like a, a pair of long gloves, it's going to be anthropomorphic. You could add some, some suggestions of a human um, gesture there. You can see how they're laying. Um, so I'm kind of tempted to use those too. Um, you could use doll parts, old toys, you know, whether they're yours or belonging to a child in your family. Here I have a variety of ways that I'm going to attach this and I know it looks a mess, but I really brought everything out so that I could see um, and give you some ideas. I have a variety of kinds of glue. Um, Mod Podge is really nice because you can glue under and over and make a varnish. Uh, I'm going to be using Gorilla Glue for all of my uh, glue needs. You can use uh, E6000 too. Uh, needle and thread, Velcro. I'm really fond of things like these. I think these are for... Um, something to do with it with livestock gates, but I love them because they're, again, they're modular. Uh, I really like the way they might attach uh, um, this kind of uh, tissue paper because if you use Mod Podge or some other kind of thin glue, um, you can give a canvas or what I'm going to use is the inside of a pizza box. Um, I'm going to show you that you can use that and make a canvas uh, for this product, project. Remember, you can do 2D um, or you can do 3D. Um, this, you know, if you wanted to use a box, here I have, remember everything has a meaning. Here I have, it was a present for my little boy, it's a tiny Vans box, so, you know, that could mean a lot of things. I could build my whole uh, mixed media project in this box, and it would give the meaning, I could either use the box because I liked its box shape, or I could be using it because I want to illustrate consumerism, even touching the toddler, or, you know, um, tiny people... Uh, you know, growing into adults before their age or something like that. You know, it has a meaning to it that it comes with. with what I want to do. You know, this is kind of a good idea here, I think. I'm on to something. Um, I can put whatever, give my hands whatever hand they want. So, I've got the beginnings of something here. Um, I'm going to think about what this means to me and how I can make this uh, work with an idea that I might have about the world.
And so I'm thinking, I'm thinking about the hands that were dealt in life, and so this is going to be um, kind of a little thought process. That's what art is to me, is on how we become ourselves, and uh, using the cards that were dealt and um, our own personal evolution in the life that we have. Um, so that's what I'm concentrating on, and all these things are going to be. Um, probably have personal meaning for me, but universal also. Um, so the eggs are going to come in handy. Um, I'm going to use a lot of thread because I've done a lot of knitting with uh, metal in my work. Um, so I'm going to incorporate that. You can think of things that are important to you to put into your work. Um, I think that really adds value to it and you'll enjoy it more. And this is really about enjoying creating something. That You can ball up paper, you can make something primarily 3D. Um, if you're looking to make something primarily 2D with 3D elements like this, um, so things that you have at your house, a good place to start. And if you're missing some essential item, you can often find things at the dollar store that may be, um, you may be able to transform uh, into something that has that universal significance, like a hand um, or an eye or a key or an egg or things like that. Last night I did some more work. I couldn't resist uh, stuffing tissue paper in the hand, so now they look so much more lifelike and I can pose them in different ways. So all this is, is I cut out an oval. Hello, Alf. Um, I cut out an oval on uh, a large piece of paper. Um, you could do this out of cardboard, too. And then I took my Mod Podge. Um, hello, Kitty. Um... So I took some uh, tissue paper and the Mod Podge and I stuck it on there and then I took some ink cartridges and I kind of slung it around. So I was using a little bit of uh, Pollock there um, in my work. It kind of blobbed up a bit more than what I liked but I really liked the color and I added a little bit of the browner tissue paper. Um, but now I'm not really happy with this square so I'm going to cut it into an oval. Um, you see I have these ovals and I have the eggs that I'm going to add and it's really turning into um, a kind of repetition of the new beginnings of life and something to do with the women in my family. So I think the egg motif echoing it through the piece is going to work for me. I realized when I was, uh, after working with this a little while, stuffing the hands and working with it at night, um, you know, on the couch relaxing and I did this paper background with some ink. Um, I couldn't decide what position to put the hands into. Um, I just really couldn't decide. I have the cards and I was thinking, do I still want to use those? Um, do I want to have it like this? Uh, should I have them out? Should they be holding something? And then I remembered these fasteners that I had found earlier. I can cut a slit in the cardboard uh, it's pretty thin, but then have this out like that and pretty much place them in different ways and have that be a part of the work. So I'm going to put, I'm going to kind of look at where it's at um, and then uh, use my X-Acto knife to uh, cut a little slit. of these so that they're curved and go around the finger better naturally.
you're working with found objects, even if that are objects that you've collected yourself, so they're really yours. Um, remember, this was a this was this baby toy, and it's green and polka dotted on the other side. So I used a marker, and I didn't do the greatest job, but I did put a brown patina over it, so that now it goes with the uh, the coloring goes with this kind of nostalgic look to it of you know things that might have belonged to your great grandmother. Um, and and you might have to do that. You might have to change some of the material, paint it, markers, put paper over it, um, make it so that it's cohesive, so it looks like it goes together. Um, unless you're working on something where you want to show that things are in juxtaposition or that they clash, they don't go together, then you're going to make that an obvious part of your piece. But do think about it. Think about the combination of things and how they work together. Remember the catalpa beans and the little eggs that I had that were making this project interesting to me? I realized I'm going to use these uh, bean pod halves from the catalpa um, to look like a nest on the larger egg at the bottom, so I'm going to attach those. This piece I'm probably not going to use at all, so this is the first thing I started off making, uh, but I'm just going to put it aside. It's kind of delicate, but I put this contrasting paper behind where I'm going to put the little bird eggs because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see it. I used the Gorilla Glue on these. Again, I had a little bit of trouble. They were already broken, but I broke them a little bit more. But I have enough to where it really adds detail. I have the fallen broken eggs and the whole eggs waiting to hatch. It's going with my th Okay, so the Gorilla Glue dried in a kind of foamy substance and I did not like that. So I'm actually using push pins to pin my beans on here for the nest and the push pins through, well they're uh, sewing pins but you could actually use tacks too. Um, they're working really well, it's really easy and they're securing it so that and that kind of goes along well too with my idea of this nest because sometimes there are some pointy parts of a safety nest. If, um ways I've got these things pinned down. I sewed the cards here together and then I have them clipped into the hand. I have the hand clipped in with these um, little brackets that uh, these little guys that I curved and slit the back to put them in. So I'm clamping those in there and then uh, I'm just going to slide the joker card in because sometimes you, you can really rely a lot on tension um, so I'm just going to put him in like that um, because it's a very casual gesture uh, in my mind too. Uh, so sometimes you might want to secure things more and sometimes just um, clipping them on works well. Here is this finished piece which included a lot of different objects and fasteners. And then this one which is a lot more simple and just included ink, uh, crayons, is in Prismacolor. Yeah as well the Flowers uh, were drawn on separate paper, a separate, different kind of paper, very thin transfer pe paper with uh, Prismacolor, and then the hearts were drawn on the tissue paper that I uh, had glued with Mod Podge to the canvas. So there's uh, several different types of uh, media used there. And then this one, I used a lot of different things. I used pens, I used these fence brackets, mirrors, uh, a play mirror, cards, and found... Um, kid gloves, um, or leather gloves, uh, tissue paper, ink, and red thread, uh, along with some uh, catalpa beans and found lizard eggs. So a lot of different things um, that went together to make it this.